The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. I'm not sure quite what happened there. Dow's up 47, <clears throat> SMB's up 17. And we're looking at look, there's the E mini it made a beautiful um, arch formation peak E right there at about 8:30. Spiked up peak E in the um, 10 minute chart, peak D in the five minute chart, and there's your peak E in the um, one minute chart. Uh, so, oh, that was the second one. I think this was the first one. Yep, right there. Uh, two peak Ds. Peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology is where you've got to be somewhat careful. Other things can happen. And look what happened. A minor pullback and then a pretty major pullback. There's a one minute chart. Then another rally, another D pulls back, has a big spike, just a sudden news related spike at 9 30. Uh, goes to get was Netflix probably helping the markets just to say, hey, this is fantastic. Pops up to the high of 49, uh, what was that, 49, 2450, I think, yep. <clears throat> and now it is at 49.13, having gone just under 49.10. So they're right on the 200 period exponential moving average in the five minute chart. Now it's running some. So what I want you to go through here is let me go through all of these different things. Um, here we go. The Dow, INDU. Hasn't taken out the 38.109 high, all-time high of three days ago. My suspicion is that this, based on the unbalanced volume, which is extremely high and starting to pull back a little bit, is that you've got a really good cushion in the 37.700 to the 37, even five or 400 area, at least in the very short term. There's nothing, there's nothing here that says, uh-oh, major sell-off to the 3600s, not yet. But especially when the weekly chart has continued in a leg A from the 32,200s low of October, the last uh, couple of days of October. And now what we're looking at, we've, we've got a little potential. This is only Wednesday, and Wednesday's only become, we're not even an hour into the day. So we've got to wait for a whole week till Friday before we can talk about this particular candle, which made an extension of this leg A. Look, every single bar had a high that was taking out the following. In fact, higher highs and higher lows right up until that doji candle there. Then it made higher highs and started to make slightly lower lows. So it creates a kind of a megaphone, a triangle formation. And then it snuck to the upside uh, with a big spike. What, what we, when's it? Monday. Monday's big spike. So continuing on from Friday's big action. So that just says to me there's a lot of buying going on, but on the very short term, I'm saying it's somewhat extended based on my on balance volume, but that nine period moving average is the indicator I call the indicator of last resort. Let me just go. In fact, I'll do this right now. Why not? Um, in fact, I'll make it as simple as possible. I'll use no other indicators but this particular one. And whenever I do this, I'm just totally embarrassed to say, wow, just stick to your rules, man. <laughs> Look at this. The, oh, thank goodness we have here because we are still long the Dow. That's all the way from the October 2022 low. And plus, we, we're long from the 2020 low. Um, and we still hold those positions in the Dow. Dow and the, the last one is in the three times long the Dow. But look at that. That was a beautiful October low. But what I did in that October low is I chose instead of, like I normally do, go for the diamonds, just add them, add a new position. I chose Microsoft, not complaining at all, because it's gone from 338 to today's all-time high. It's up at 403. I use that as a proxy for both the Dow, or no, not both, for the Dow, the S&P, the QQQ, and the XLK, which is the S&P tech sector uh, uh, spider. Um, yeah, so looking at this, there is nothing here that says from the green line that you should be careful. But look at this extension to the upside. Um, it's so far away from the nine period moving average that it says maybe what we're looking at is some kind of a sideways consolidation that makes a kind of a cup formation and then retest whatever the high is this week over a period of a couple of weeks. But we could be pulling back to get that green line 
This is the nine period moving average. It turns green when it's positive over the 14. It turns pink like it did for two days right over there, going to the October low. This is a fantastic indicator. Why? Look, here's the S&P. Green. Nothing to see here in terms of negativity. However, you can see that when you're getting above the green line, you've got to monitor each one of those peaks because at a certain point it does get overbought and therefore you need to get some kind of a digestive uh, action. Uh, and we'll see, for it to turn pink, you'll probably have to see the S&P instead of being up 19 and 48.83 at an all-time high right now, you'd have to see it probably under... 4,800, probably 4,792-ish, somewhere in that area. All right, let's look at the QQQ. This is a daily chart, also fantastic. Green, uh, up 3.64 at 427.15. That's just what I was talking about, Netflix. This, <laughs> let's see where Netflix was. Um, look at that spike. It's done it before. In fact, it usually does it. Actually, I need to speak about this immediately because I'm going to forget. There's no rush for it. But I just got the information, one of our, one of our uh, tigers sent me uh, this news, that there's going to be a new United States skyscraper. Now, for all of those of you who know me from when I started here at TFNN, and those who knew me before that, um, I've spoken about skyscrapers forever. I thought I was actually the one that discovered that uh, markets make major, major highs uh, when skyscrapers reached the ultimate high or, or, or announced, and I did research going all the way back to the summer of 2000. Oh, I, I did it way back before that, um, trying to find as much information going to the, 19, the 1880s when skyscrapers began, tall buildings began skyscrapers. But the Empire State Building was announced in the summer, late summer of, 2000, uh, of 1929. Weeks later, September the 2nd or 3rd, makes an all-time high of 386 and plummets down to the low of 40. The Empire State Building was built in the shortest period of time for the tallest building in the world, um, 30 months or something like that. And I have followed this forever. You remember, I, for some of you might know me from earlier on, when the Petronas Towers were announced in Malaysia, I said, hey, that's going to be the top, and boy, was that a top. When the Burj, the Dubai, what did they call it initially? Now they call it Khalifa, but it was, oh, man, uh, the Burj. Anyway, Burj Dubai, I think it was called, um, was um, built. I said, watch out. Remember, they had to actually close the market the very week that, that it opened. Um, so in 2000, I said, I think this is going to be a major top because it was announced that in Chicago, um, they were going to build the t world's tallest building, five, I can't remember what it was, number five, something. Anyway, that was never built. It was postponed. And then in 2007, they announced it again, and then it wasn't built. I don't think it's ever been built. But we've just got an announcement that, where do you think in the United States of America they would build the, the United States' tallest building? New York, right? Nah. Or oh, maybe... Uh, where else? Where, would, where else? Chicago? Nah. Oklahoma City. Announcement just made. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 45, S&P's up 22. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As I'm covering this kind of overview, uh, see in the den, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, we've got, was it there? Yeah, just a GD uh, bezel. Your GD spiking on earnings. GD is one that I discussed. I, I, we had, I think it was Earl months and months ago talking about um, he had got LMT. I think LMT, LMT, Lockheed Martin. Yeah, Lockheed Martin. And I said, you know, looking at these different uh, um, defense stocks, I think I don't see anything wrong with it, and it did spike very nicely. It went up to 465, and now it's down 434 over the last few days. But I said Raytheon uh, is one that has the dome, the iron dome. That might mean longer term it has more potential sustained outlook, and that uh, that spiked as well very nicely just the other day. It's up at 92, and that might the one that I like the best was GD, because I don't know why, what it is, but General Dynamics seemed to have the best chart. That's all I'm looking at is chart pattern. And it had a really nice move up to about two, uh, two, 261 level. Then it pulled back to 247 and kind of hung around there. And then it must have had earnings today because it's up $12 at 261.50. Now it's got that missing leg D. So it's got D in the daily, D for daily, D for weekly, uh, there's your leg D, and the monthly chart has gone to all-time highs, just slightly higher highs it keeps making, and now it's at 261. Um, I think this is, I, I'm calling this a leg B for now in the monthly chart. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. So let me go back to what I was looking at. So I, I always talk about the SMH as being kind of the engine. This is the, the crude oil of the 20, 21st century. We had for... 100 and something years we've had crude oil, and it'll remain there until something takes over, but it hasn't yet. So crude oil is important. But now the crude oil of the economy is the uh, semiconductors. And the semiconductors, all-time high as we speak, at uh, 193.12, up 4.13. Leg, leg E in the uh, very quick could be an instant restart. I'm not sure it could be right now. But anyway, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. So leg E right now in the daily, 
leg D in the weekly, only a leg C in the monthly chart. And if you look at this particular chart right here that I was showing just now, once again, big embarrassment. Why? Because you didn't have to do anything from, um, let me give you the exact crossover right here. The gap up crossover right there. That was the October uh, October of 2023. Big spike to the upside. That pink changed to green. I, and then the question came in, how come you were thinking that the market would have a bit of a, 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 have, a have a dip based on the SMHs, the semiconductors? Well, look at that turn down. That was one of the longest and uh, turn downs we've had since um, November. So we pull back from the tw the twentieth of December, and we pull back pretty much from five hundred down to four sixty one. So that's uh, yeah, about a nine nine percent pullback. It doesn't do that very often. So that's what we use, and we had the SOXS three times short. Um, we made some money, and then we, we got out um, of it completely. And now what we've got is this huge move to the upside, huge gap. And you can see, oh, duh, SMHs. There's the SMHs. You have the sharpest pullback in points from when we went short. Hey, you haven't had a percentage move like this or a point move like this since that big move down in the SMHs back in October of 2023, um, when it went from 154 down to uh, 136. And then the next one was much smaller, much shallower. So this one was pretty well identified. The big mistake is when it flipped to green after one or two bars of pink, that nine period moving average went green again, should have just jumped on the bandwagon. So I did not do that. We were in other things. We were in the Microsoft, which has had a very nice move, got other things going on. So all I can say is, wow, missed that, all-time high. So it's at an all-time high, and I always say that the semis tend to, to kind of indicate what the market's going to do. And until they really start to have a pretty decent pullback, we've got to consider that this is still very positive for the general market. On the very short term, Look at this. The unbalanced volume is extremely overbought. The nine, the uh, nine period moving average is way over the 14. That's already bullish. The price is way over the nine. That's also extremely bullish. The um, stochastic is at 96. That's very bullish. So it would say that you got some kind of a pullback. But until this unbalanced volume really takes a dive and goes under at, at this point, I, I, I can't use it as a percentage because I've had it. Um, it's just price to the right side it doesn't say um, uh, go to the index itself <clears throat> on a percentage basis but it's overbought and if I even if I pull it out like this look I extend it you can see sometimes when you do that uh, the peaks look like they aren't really peaks but in this particular point we haven't got a peak because it hasn't turned down yet so I'm monitoring this very closely so I want to get out of this right now I want to talk about other things other than to say yeah uh, it's it's upsetting when you miss something. We have we've got the equivalent, certainly, um, but that's fine. We don't have this particular one, and there's really no excuse in the sense that um, that breakout says you could also t kind of get call options. I mean, there are other ways to play. So yes, that's a miss, um, and, the, and the semiconductor is all time high right now as we speak. So within that context, I wanted to show you something else. Uh, the IWM has started to pick up a little bit of strength. Oh, question came in. Can I do the cues? I will do that. So this is the 196.06 after hitting 190. Oh, 198.46. That's the reason why you've got a big red candle. Red candle yesterday, red candle today. So the iShares Russell 2000 ETF is not participating as well as it should. Oh, I wrote down that other one yesterday. Did it? Where can I find it? Oh, no. I don't have it. What was that one that was asked in the den? Coda asked it about. Oh, it was also small caps, but it was a different index. It has a slightly different, uh, a different chart formation. Anyway, so these are not acting well. But if you look at the IWB, this is the Russell 2000. Why on earth should the Russell 1000 
be doing so well. All-time high as we speak, a leg C in the daily. I, I really have to call this a leg B in the weekly chart and a leg D in the monthly chart. So you, look at the difference between the 1,000. Look at the right side chart. That's the monthly. Look, here we go, IWM. Nothing close. No, it's in a rectangle, just sideways. All right. With that said, let's do this XLK. XLK is the um, S&P Select. Let me go text spider fund. Let me just type in a C here. Yeah, this is leg B, peak B, and now it's in leg C. So this is still very positive. And it should make a D before we have to get a little bit worried. Okay, I've got that done. I want to do this real quickly. Look, here's gold. Uh, gold is now down to uh, $4. Here's the dollar. Remember the target was the 200 period experiential moving average at 103.74? Yesterday it hit as a leg D. And now it's making a peak D, pulling back. I need to talk about the six. Soon as we can, that's a 36. That's a piece of 20. You're right. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So the E mini is still trying to climb. It went above the 200 period moving average in the one minute chart, but that uh, 4918 level. It looks to me like it's going to be a tell, telling how far we go up away from it or keep coming back and hitting it as a magnet line. Anyway, let's get back to our story. So the Oklahoma City uh, Wills, no, United States uh, tallest building that's going to be built, it's a whole complex. Um, now that I've mentioned it, 
we can set it aside for now. I don't think that is, at this particular point, the Empire State announcement. Um, but in fact, it's really important in my huge coda phase um, that I'm talking about, that I've spoken about here at TFNN for, for ages and ages. Um, this is one part of it. Okay. Within that context, uh, let's uh, so uh, I got a question from Michael about um, uh, Verizon. This is Michael who spoke about having bought Broadcom and we were looking at it and I said, let's wait for a pullback if you want to add to it. Uh, and then he added and then it ran up sharply and he started taking some off. Well, it's at an all time high today at 1,254, up 28 in leg D in the daily chart, leg G slash C in the um, weekly, and F. I, I think that's going to have to change, but an F in the uh, monthly chart, spectacular. This is Broadcom. Why they ever use the symbol AVGO? I have to think about it every single time. I don't know. In the meantime, back at the ranch. Um, Congratulations on holding your core position, Michael. But that, that's great. Now, your question is about Verizon. So Verizon had earnings. It uh, must have been earnings two days yesterday. It spiked up. I'd spoken about this ages. I said to subscribers, I like Verizon. I like telephone. They're acting so well uh, from the breakout from the low of uh, October, oh, October the 6th in Verizon at 13.14, then gapped up and held the gap. And then it did a beautiful cup formation, left side, right side, price, time match, all sorts of things like that. Then it stopped at a peak D, just like the dollar's done on the 200 period moving average. But instead of pulling back sharply, it went sideways and started a brand new to another peak D, um, then pulled back. And then it went to um, an E slash B and in the time period that we were looking at. And all the time I'm saying to subscribers, we're looking at it as a dividend stock plus a capital gain. Never got into it. But look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match from way back here, way back in this high that was made um, April the 5th of 2023 at uh, 40.25 before dropping uh, to the 30 level and then coming back. And it did it almost to the day coming back to that level at the peak E slash B pulls back and now it's moved up again. So I, I like it very much now uh, because you're looking at it as both a, a dividend stock and a longer term buy and hold. It seems to me all the fears that I was talking about for, for a, a year or two or three <clears throat> about cutting the cord, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think most people who have done it have either done it and now people are sticking with what they've got. More people are sticking with what they got than changing. That's what it looks like from the chart. So I'm going to suggest this. Treat it as a three-part entry because you're talking longer term. The first entry is here saying this has to be at least within a point or two of some kind of a pullback that could be three or four points, or maybe a 9 or 10% pullback from whatever the peak is here. That's one thing. So I would just start a very small position right here because you're a longer term uh, position player. And then see how it fills the gap between 40 and 39. How it does that is going to be important because if at any point it does, it pulls back and then it continues lower. We have to wait for the next entry. So you've got to be prepared to at least have a two point pullback. I'm not even going to say have a stop in this position yet. But I, you could have a mental stop, and the mental stop should be uh, about three points lower in, let's call it 48, let's call it 49.20, just for now, uh, 39.20. So start your position, and then let's follow it from there. I like it. I think I'm, do I like it better than telephone? Yes, I like it better than telephone. For some reason, telephone is unable to stain in the same manner with higher highs and higher lows than Verizon. So, yes, start your position with a, a reasonable stop at this particular point, and then we will follow it. That's altogether different to anybody who's looking at trades or anything like that. That is a position play for 2024. I hope, I hope that helps you. Next question came in. Where did it go? Where did it go? Um, yeah, could you, do, could you show us the uh, currencies? So we've got the dollar. It did the Chapman Wave methodology where I go from a buy signal to a buy mode. 
and I said the target I have is 103.74 at the 200 period moving average. But you've got to be careful because every time it's hit this 200 period moving average, remember, this is a technique for those of you who use moving averages. Just put it on your chart. You never need it until you need it. Look at the way it was a magnet resistance, uh, support resistance so all the time through that August, September level of last year. And then it broke out. What did it do? It came right back before it had a bounce to that same left side, right side price time match uh, in the uh, 102 area. Then it bounced to where? The 200 period moving average. And then it pulled back sharply under to about 100. Then it ran all the way up to the high of 103 point, was it 80 something? Yeah, 103.80, 103.82 yesterday, right on, well, it was just a fraction above the 103.74, 200 period moving average. Now it's pulling back. But that nine period moving average is still positive. So anybody says, oh, that's it for the dollar. Just be a little careful here, because if you look at the EUR, USD, um, Look how it's coming back to the 200 period moving edge, the exact mirror image here um, after that peak E. Look at that beautiful left side, right side price time match uh, going to the 1.113 uh, area. And now look at this pulling back and look at the uh, USD JPY went to uh, a peak D just like the dollar. Also a big red candle today, but that nine is still very strong. The MACD is good, stochastic said 89%. I just wouldn't rule these things out right now. They're still in play. So I want you to do that. Then I want you to do USDCAD. I don't know if I've still got it notated. God, it'll be, oh, I have. Good. So that went to a peak E. This is the, the currency pair, dollar, Canadian dollar. And there's your up arrow meaning buy mode, I can do that because it's history. I cannot be wrong because I'm looking back A, B, C, D, just above the 200 pre moving average. What's the magnet? The magnet is 1.3, 1 1.3, I'll give it you exactly for those of you interested. 1.348. And where is it now? 1.348. So, uh, yeah, right on the 200 period moving average. So these are, what's the British pound doing? I hope I've got this. Oh, please, please, please. Yeah, so went to a D, right? There's a G slash D, so that's G slash C. This becomes a D. And it's holding quite nicely. This is the British pound. Um, and now it's just gone sideways. It's gone sideways actually from uh, end of November to where we are today. So... Um, all the currencies are just in their own little orbit right now. And that's what I want you to show. I want you to get to the gold and silver. There gold and silver. As you go to the break, gold is, look at this chart. Ah, oh, just cannot get out of its own way. This is looking at for 2003. It's at 2007. It's silver. As we go to the break, down up 62. SME's up 27. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I, let's see, I, I can't even remember where I was with the, the 70 charts being the break. Um, I think I had a, oh, silver, that's right. I was looking at silver, and silver is just not, it's having a nice session today, but it's just stuck in the doldrums. I think it can bounce, certainly it's a 22.85, uh, 23.84 is the 200 period moving average, but if it does get there and it closes above it, I think that's a change of trend in the shorter term. So we're watching that closely. I want to just do high grade copper. I had a question about the high grade copper. Nice move up today. Ho ho ho. SCCO. Is that also participating? Hmm, it is to a certain. So this is, uh, oh man, where's the notation on this? this? Oh, there it is. So this is Southern Copper. And we've got from that low right there, we've got peak A, B, under is this A, B, C, D, pulls back sharply from the D. And now it's having a big move up to the upside. Yeah, this is acting much better. This is the Chapman Falling Axe Formation right there. Uh, right there. Oops, right there. And right there. So let's just see. Now, I did that a little bit quickly. So this should have been the first Falling Axe Formation, and it broke out above it. Now, yes, the second, uh, where well, hasn't, it hasn't stopped. So this would have been, yeah, that right. Okay. So this is a nice breakout. And it's really important. If copper can keep rallying, it's going to be a big help. It's going to help all those. Remember Toll, we were looking at Toll Brothers uh, down today, 43 cents. And I don't want to get through it right now because I said I would go for Steve and the Dan QQQ. So QQQs are in leg uh, D right now in the daily chart, up 5.57, up at 40, the 429 level. Uh, but it's only a leg C in the weekly chart and only a leg B in the monthly. So on a very short-term basis, this is strength. You see the buying that's coming now, the Dow is up 117. Dow is the kind of the laggard with the S&P doing well. Uh, the QQQ is up 1.3%. Um, the S&P is only up 0.73%. Uh, the SMHs, the semiconductors, are up. 2.6%. Uh, so this is a very good move in the QQQ. Obviously, Netflix is, is just a really big part of it. But when it moves up as part of the Magnificent Seven, it really benefits every all, all the others. So it made a peak. Netflix made a peak. D, this is a very strong, calling this a leg. Ooh, could be an alternate count. A, B, C. Yeah. Well, I'll call it E for now. No, no, there's no need to do anything else. It's just a huge spectacular gap to the upside. And not an all-time high. That all-time high was 700.99, missed by one penny, around number 701 high. November of 2021 pulls back to the 180-ish level. And here it is at 555. Uh, that's really magnificent. Leg D in the monthly, leg D in the weekly. Uh, these don't say, oh, my God, you got to be careful. It just says, 
these where other things can happen. That's where you start to monitor it much closer. And that's where we are. So um, that's good. So let's go back to the QQQ. And as I'm looking, don't type it there. Okay, there it is. One, two, three. So the QQQ um, has had a couple of gaps. And this is the second gap since the most recent low that was made uh, around about January the 3rd or 4th. Was it January the 5th? At 395. <laughs> wow, what a big move. Um, yeah, so it's looking very nice. Now, I, I did this in the 120 minute chart for that peak D, but this is peak. Oh my, look at this. This is, a, this is the 120 minute chart. So, this is a D down arrow right here, right there. This is a brand new buy signal to buy mode. And it's only in A, B, it's in leg C in the 120 minute chart. The way I'm looking at this, I think it's next week. This is the scenario that I'm, I'm, I'm not anticipating, but it's a scenario I'm giving myself contemplation. Let's put it that way. It's a possible scenario, and we'll see what happens there. And that is that going into the, uh, look, next week we've got a whole week, uh, the 20. We've got a whole week still to finish up, the 23rd to the 28th, that's Friday. And then we've got all the way through Wednesday, a week from today. And I'm suspecting that as we get into the beginning of next week, there is a sudden slide in the market. This is my just the way I'm looking at the market based on some of the technicals that I use. There's a sudden slide. It either starts maybe Friday as we're going to the end of this week or the beginning of next next week. And that says that the monthly chart is going to have a big question of whether the peak, the, the highs that were made this month become peaks in February as the market pulls back. That's kind of a scenario that I'm looking at. And pulled back just means it doesn't make a new high. It could, I've seen this happen before where we've been for a whole month with a fractional lower high from the previous month. And then the next month goes to a new, a new a higher high. So I'm just saying that's where the digestive phase really kicks in. That kind of fits in with my SMHs right now, going to uh, leg E, um, fabulous action. But wow, overbought and all, all, all the technicals that I would consider as overbought. And that would be the nine period moving average. And, and I'm waiting for the relative strength to turn pink, which it hasn't done in the daily chart, and that's also going to be a clue. So that's just on a very short-term basis. I'm looking at that over, over the next week. Hope that helps. Oh, you want to know uh, parameters. So what I am looking at here is where is the support? I'm now looking at the daily. I'm not doing the short-term. First of all, you've got the gap. So that means that yesterday's high of four, uh, was at 423.70. If it closes under that, then you immediately have to watch for the low of yesterday, which is 420.57. If there is a close anytime, and I'm, even if it goes high, I'm using this bar right here, this candle. If there is a close under yesterday's low in the QQQs, it says we've begun at least a near term, not even a short term, but a near term consolidation. Why? Because when you move to the upside, and I'll show you this right now, I don't often show it. This is Chapman Wave automated. Um, oh, I have to go back to that chart just to see if I want to do anything here. Uh, this is peak C in the one minute chart right there. This is D, that's E, and that's F. So you went to an F, but you're only at a B. So this is something I need to talk about um, before we go anywhere else and before the break comes, which is coming up real soon. You see the way that the nine period moving average in the five minute chart turned green, and this is only a leg B right here. It says if the technicals remain strong, we could be looking at this set about it's now 10 minutes to 11 uh, Eastern time. We could be looking at this at about 10 minutes to three. And it's still green and we've gone to a leg C or a D. But this becomes only a leg A to the upside. In the, can, is that correct? No, no, no. It's not because we went we went lower. Yeah, there's the instant restart. All right, so we'll just do one thing at a time. So in the five-minute chart, if there isn't a three bars closing three 
five-minute bars, closing under 49.18 in the next uh, 30 minutes to uh, 45 minutes, there's a chance that we should go higher. So don't ever rule out that, oh, you've got yourself a... Don't set your mind that this is so overbought, we've got to get a sell-off. Of course you've got to get a sell-off. Mentally, emotionally. The child doesn't know that. But as I'm looking at it right now, actually, I can break myself five minutes ago. Did it take out the left side low? Uh, yes, it did. Okay. So this is different. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 
Pablo, so just uh, as we're wrapping up this one, before you go to Steve Rose and all the other great programming coming up today, um, what I want you to say is this. Uh, the question came in about this. So everyone herding into QQQ stocks, setting us up for massive top this year. I think what we're looking at is the acceleration we're looking at right now is setting us up for a first quarter dip that is a surprise. And my suspicion is it's going to be uh, news related. And you remember I had spoken about this, oh, I don't know, I'll go into it right now, that the yields is just a little bit part of it. I don't have anything that says, oh my God, this dark news cloud cover is sitting there. This is, I'm getting to that point, but I haven't got to it yet. I've just got hints, little dark clouds here and there, but the sun appears very quickly like it did today. But don't be over anxious about saying, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Then. No, let this run its course. Let us go to the upside. This is going to high tide. When the tide's complete, you'll deal with it. But right now, try not to get in the way of your own thinking. That's the most important thing. Have a great rest of the day. Check out my opening call date. Newsletter, if you're under the radar with something, don't be Have a great 